I read for Austria was The Empress and the Cake by Linda Stift, which I think that's how you'd say it, and it's translated by the, from the German by Jamie Bullock. This book is published by Perry and Press, he very kindly sent me it for review, along with a number of different other titles um, by the same publishing house that they, that they thought I'd like for around the world. Um, so there's going to be a couple that you'll spy. Um, they specialise in short books, like under 200 pages, um, all from Europe and translated fiction. So if you're interested in European translated fiction, they're a really good publishing house to have a look at on their website. Um, so, so this book was part of their fairy tale kind of series. Uh, I think there's three books they have that are in that kind of, it's not a trilogy, but in that kind of set of books. Um, and this one is about a young woman who um, is out one day walking through Austria and is sort of beckoned into a pastry shop by an older woman who suggests that they buy a cake to share, like a whole cake, and um, that they split and she takes half the cake home and the old lady takes half the cake home. Um, so she agrees um, and they go and buy the cake, um, but the woman suggests that she comes to her house to have a slice um, since she's never going to be able to eat a whole half a cake. <laughs> um, so the woman kind of embarks into this weird relationship with this older woman um, who sort of pushes herself into her life and um, lets her do kind of stranger and stranger things I suppose. Um, it was a really strange book and it plays with a lot of different things. Um, I did actually really like it, I think I gave it four stars in total, um, but there is definitely, definitely a need to let you know that there is a trigger warning here for eating disorders, particularly bulimia, um, though potentially if you had binge eating disorder I can see that that would apply as a trigger, um, and potentially anorexia as well. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is, to be honest, one of the main focuses of this book, um, and actually that's kind of what I liked um, in a weird way. I, I, I haven't read about eating disorders in a really long time um, because I find it can be quite triggering for me and my own doings with food um, and I'd kind of been a bit worried to pick anything up in case it did that kind of, you know, that trigger and I found it too difficult or, you know, it tempted me to fall back into old ways. Um, but for me this one I didn't find triggering because of the fact it was more on the bulimia side and that was never my bag. <laughs> um, so I could kind of read about it and see the patterns of thinking and the addiction that it is um, without it triggering me and I found that actually quite valuable. Um, I do think that it is like a good depiction of um, I think the, the kind of mindset of binging, um, so if you're looking for a book with kind of representation of that kind, um, that's here. Um, but yeah, as I say, be aware, if you're currently suffering from binge eating disorder or bulimia, I think this one might be too difficult to read, um, potentially. Um, but yeah, it is really good, it's, it's a strange, a really strange book, it plays with a lot of Austrian history and uh, royalty and past lives and just strange, it's kind of a thriller in its own way, but it's weaving all of these things in together. I really liked it, I'm really glad I read it. Um, I was a little bit nervous about it because I knew it was about the eating disorder content. Um, Acacia from Acacia Rives let me know, um, but I did actually really, really like this one. And the next book that I have to talk about is My Pick for Germany. Visitation by Jenny Erpenbeck um, for Germany and this was translated by Susan Bukowski. Uh, this one was recommended to me by Mercy from Mercy's Bookish Musings, I'm sure you all know her channel already. Um, and I looked at this one and looked at another one that she written as well and I decided, do you know what, I was going to go with the one um, that Mercedes recommended. This is an in a really interesting book but a really odd book. And actually it kind of pairs quite nicely with the book I've literally just finished, which I'll talk about in my next Round the World wrap up, um, in that it plays around a lot with time um, and with the passage of people's lives, um, I think it's probably the easiest way to describe it. Um, the, the main character in a way is actually a house, it's kind of a building, um, and we view the people who come into that house um, and see a little bit of their kind of stay there. Um, but there is a constant in there, there's a character called the gardener who is um, sort of a keeper of the house in a way and, and kind of um, is kind of eternal in some in some manner. He he remains despite the fact that families have gone and gone through and passed away and 
yeah so it is it is that sense of kind of what do we own of the land and what impact does our history have um on you know on the world itself and and even quite tumultuous events how much does that actually impact um people down the line uh and and this book really is not shying away from germany's history in terms of um nazism and um the holocaust and the depictions of the characters um sort of you know that they're aware and they're going through life um, and being impacted by these things and um, it's exploring those elements as well so I don't want to give too much away because I'm, I'm keep, I keep trying to think of things I could I could say that would kind of give you a sense of that but I, I think hopefully that will that will do it hopefully I've, I've kind of given some idea um but yeah it, it was I think a really good book to have for Germany because of the fact that rather than just focusing on one aspect of Germany, which could have very easily been just like a war novel. It spanned over such a long sort of period that you saw lots of different glimpses and lots of different kinds of Germany. Um, and I think that was quite valuable for me because I feel as though whilst like the war elements and things are interesting, um, there's a lot of that happening in Europe. And a lot of the other books I've read, whilst not explicitly about Germany, have kind of been about Germany. and. Yeah, it was just, it was good to have something that did have that reach, I suppose. And I'm sorry that I'm a little bit um, all over the place with my like, words today, I know I am. It's because I've got tinnitus, for some reason it just happens sometimes. So I'm trying to talk, but I'm also like, I can hear tinnitus, so do, do excuse that, I will do my best. Um, sometimes it happens and I just look a bit lost and gormous in my videos. Um, next, next we have Luxembourg. <laughs> I chose for Luxembourg was On the Edge um, by Annie Marie Ruter and this one I think was written in English. Um, this is a collection of short stories all about characters who are sort of in a, a strange position so it, it may not be that they are literally like on an edge but it, it's things like um, there's one about a um, two actually about school teachers outside of school um, so kind of that they are being defined by their profession but who are they outside of that environment um there are things there's, there's one story i really like probably my favorite story of the collection was one about um a woman who has cared for a family her entire life um and how she is sort of connected to that family unit um but whilst still being outside of that um the book kind of mentions that this um echoes kind of luxembourg's place in that it um sort of nestles in the middle of lots of other countries but but seems to kind of never be quite one thing or another thing um which i found really interesting and, and i think this is actually probably the first collection of what i would properly call like flash fiction that i have that i own obviously i've read flash fiction before but it's mostly been like in magazines um and like writing magazines and stuff but like the fact that this is like literally like a couple pages each like they, they are probably 500 word stories to a thousand word stories max um and that was something i really appreciated i i felt like it kind of brought the challenge to life a little bit um because there's been lots of heavy novels there's been lots of really heavy topics as well um in europe and i think yeah i i did i did like it i think i nearly gave it five stars actually um but i think four stars is probably fairer um because i think part of that that that's sort of ah oh, that's amazing it's because it was flash fiction um but a really interesting little collection and something you you know because it's only only printed by this particular publishing house which is black fountain um you probably won't have seen around so if if that kind of sounds like your bag kind of stories about people not quite fitting in um in a really short format then maybe you'd like this one the next one i have is my pick for belgium <laughs> For Belgium I have Sulfuric Acid by Emily Northam and this one was translated by Sean Whitside, Whiteside, sorry. This was a five star book, absolutely a five star book. Um, it's so dark and like I'm smiling so much but I feel like that's bad and like I feel like I should be very serious but it was just like so, so well done and so compelling. I think I read it in one sitting, like I started it quite late at night intending to just read the first like 20 pages which is what I normally do so that I'm not left reading nothing and I couldn't put it down. 
Um, this is a story about a television show kind of in the same theme as Big Brother, so um, people are watching at home uh, experience that's happening to real people's lives, so that kind of reality TV um, sense. However, the thing they're watching is actually a concentration camp. So the television show is called Concentration um, and they've allocated um, roles to kind of guards um, who are called capos, I think that's what they call them, um, and the prisoners are all given letters and numbers um, instead of names. Um, and you've got that element of it being a programme but you've also got an encapsulation of the relationships that form within concentration camps, that's what's so clever about it. Um, and the interaction between guard and prisoner and the kind of power, um, you know, disbalance of power. But it, it was just such a clever metaphor for kind of society watching and thinking, oh, isn't this awful and doing nothing in the face of something really awful. And I just, I just thought that as a concept was so clever and tying it into like the reality TV, the kind of stuff that like today we can imagine and we can really relate to. It, it, I just thought it was so well done and such a clever way um, of doing it. The, the character, um, the main character, is so beautifully formed and flawed but but so kind of heroic and it's just, yeah, I, I think I even, this, you know how sometimes I'll underline books that mean like, yeah, this was one of those ones where I did, I did like underline things um, when I was going through, which is always a sign of a really good book for me. If you ever are having a nosy screen of bookshelves and some that are underlined, you ought to borrow that one. Um, so yeah, I absolutely loved it. I'm definitely going to read more of her in future. Um, and I, I just thought it was so clever and just a perfectly packaged little book. It had everything it needed. It wasn't too long, wasn't too short character development, just, yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it, really liked it. And the last one I have is my pick for the Netherlands. So this one is The Loser by Thomas Bernhard. Now, having read this, I understand the furore about having chosen this for the Netherlands. Okay, so whilst the author was born in the Netherlands, he basically, like, the point of this book is uh, Austria. Um, I'm not going to be reading another book for the Netherlands, I don't have time, but I understand, just to say, I understand all those people who commented and were very cross, I get you. I'm going to talk about this book anyway, I think it's really, val it's really valuable to have a chat about it anyway, and as I say, I don't have time to be going back and reading, reading another book for that country. I am sorry, so whilst this book does count for the Netherlands, um, the topic is still, is Austria, <laughs> um, so apologies about that. So. This book, this book is one that I was so excited for. Um, it follows sort of three pianists, um, one of whom is a narrator, one is, what's he called? Wertenheimer. And the third is Glenn Gould, who most people who like piano music and or like Bach will have heard. Um, really famous, world famous musician. One of my absolute favourite pianists as well, just because I love Bach. So, Yes, so there was a couple of things that kind of really intrigued me about this. The first was it was about someone who was very famous and that I kind of was intrigued by anyway. Um, and secondly, the way that this is told, um, it's told in a continuous monologue. You guys know that I am a bit of a sucker for an experimental um, fiction angle to two books and that kind of hit a couple of my criteria. Um, and yeah, it was a, like a roller coaster. It's a weird book. Um, in essence, it's talking about, um, I guess, the ability to achieve and what happens when you don't achieve and the relationship between yourself and success and others and success and how do you define yourself as successful and is it limited to um, here's the most successful person and if you're underneath that you're unsuccessful or are there layers of success um, and just kind of discussing, discussing that um, as a concept. Um, but it's kind of kind of more than that because because of the way it's told and because it's it's kind of so it's so compelling because there's no paragraphs there's no chapter breaks there's nothing you just want to like like hoover it all up and if I managed it I would have read it in one go but I didn't quite manage it I did it in two instead just two nights worth because I didn't quite have time to read it all in one go um but it's kind of in a way about like the self and like the internal conversations we have with ourselves because of the fact you have this ongoing conversation um 
and it's about the relationship that Austria seems to have with itself and with um, intellectual sort of movement and and, and um, art, I suppose. Um, so, so having read this one, I did do a little bit of research into Thomas Bernhard in general because I think he is someone I need to read more of. Um, and that's kind of his thing, is that he does these weird books around one famous person kind of exploring an idea. Um, and that is something that really appeals. Um, it wasn't that, like, I wasn't reading this and thinking, like, I love it, it's going to be one of my favourite books of all time. But it hit a number of things for me outside of just the Glen Gould and the Bark, which are like some of my favourite things. Um, but it just hit some things for me in terms of what he was trying to achieve. And I just thought that was such an interesting kind of repertoire of writing to focus on uh, the telling of the, and the kind of warping almost of a person who's very famous as life to fit a storyline because like he plays with Glen Gould as well. So um, he, the, the sort of main character, who's one of these failed pianists, um, says that Glenn Gould died whilst playing the Goldberg Variations, which obviously didn't happen in reality. Um, I think he did die of a stroke, but not playing piano. Um, and he kind of amplifies these details of these people's lives um, to suit the storyline. And I think this is one of these authors, if you have more time than I do just because I'm doing all around the world stuff, you could really dig into like watching you know documentaries or reading biographies about the famous people he's talking about and trying to figure out what he's doing and making his changes. Um, so yeah, I, I think this has been a really bloody successful um, little wrap up here. I can honestly say that I've enjoyed each and every one of these books um, and I would actually recommend all of these books um, all in their different ways. Um, yeah, so, so let me know in the comments down below, what, what do you think about these? Have you read any of them? Um, are there any that you'd recommend? Have you read any other um, Thomas Bernhards that were, were, were decent and worth reading? Um, I have seen a few people say that The Losers is best, um, so potentially I've just hit on the best one and that's, that's the only one that's decent, so do let me know if, if um, I waste my time next year reading any more of him. Let me know how you're doing, if you're sort of taking part um, in some way. I know a couple of people are reading um, around Europe with me, um, so do let me know if you're taking part, how you're getting on, because I think that's so brilliant. Um, yes, I will chat to you guys soon in my next video, and look after yourselves until then. Bye!